Hey, I'm here at uh, Full Flush Poker this, this morning, Al Spath, and I'm talking with Pat Russo from uh, somewhere in the United States in Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> <laughs> he's on Skype with me, and we're both sitting at the table. Uh, I'm Teach, and he's Fly Guy, and we're not going to collude in any way, way shape, or form. Uh, we're not going to talk about the hands until after they're over. This man, bet 225. That's an easy fold for me. Get out of the way. I was the one that raised pre-flop out of position. So what will happen in this, this video is that the cards will be dealt. And if Pat was not playing in the hand right now, he said he would, he would fold anyhow there. But he would just not tell me his cards or anything, but I would tell him my cards and let him... Uh, play along with me and I, I may ask him some questions or something like that what would he do in this situation or there might be a hand that he's in and i'm not in and he'll tell me or us his cards we won't see them of course but we'll know what they are and then he'll make his plays and then i'll ask him questions afterwards on why here i've got a king four i'm in a small blind against uh this individual here i'm just gonna raise it up a little bit and See if he'll just go away. It also lets me know what he'll defend and how he'll defend later on. Maybe I want to trap him. So we hit top pair, bad kicker, which you don't worry about kickers when your head's up here. You just fire away and take it down. Are you playing this hand? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Don't tell us what you have until after I make my... Okay, I'm folding here, so now tell us what you have. I have queen, queen. Pocket queens, okay. So he raised the pot, which is, looks like a late position raise, and he gets no action at all. That's just the way it goes. If you limp in with that hand, you give the, the blinds a chance to pick up something and beat you. So it's a good move, and I'm folding the 6-2 here. Now you have to look at I don't the, really have a feel for the table yet, though. I, I'm just going to play it straight. Yeah, no problem. But the biggest thing I would point out if, if you were in a lesson with me, and I'm folding here, is the fact that the two to your right are sitting out, two across the table who seem to be friends, 808 and 804 here. It's odd names to be uh, at the same table. So you got four there that's sitting out, and then you got an empty seat to my left. Uh, or to, yeah, so you got five sitting out. So we're we're only playing five five, five handed. So we can open up our ranges a little bit more. And you notice that not a lot of people are entering the pot now. They're both right. back simultaneously together. So that lets me know that there might be uh, a situation going on here. See, I won't ask Pat if he's playing because he's in a small blind and he doesn't know. It, it would depend on if anybody raises like that. Now he would know if he's playing or not. Right. I'm real bold. The only reason he would play here out of position is if he had a big hand. You have to have a much bigger hand if somebody else raises, especially in early position. And I'll fold my queen 10 here too. I, I have jack queen. <clears throat> So in this case, I have king nine suited. I'm going to pay the 25 cents. If he raises it up, I'll probably get rid of it. Just taking the chance I would hit three clubs or two clubs here, and I didn't do it. Now, if somebody would bet 50 cents here and not bet the right amount, I would come over the top with a, with a check raise. They have to bet the right amount here. They have to bet at least 75 cents. Right. This guy, this guy coaches enough. So neither one of them bet. I'm going to bet. Yeah. I've got a redraw for the... And I just take it down because if they had no interest, the six doesn't look like a card that's going to help them anyhow. So therefore, why not pick up the free money? So what I'm going to do in, in my next... This is a test today just to demonstrate 
what goes on on, on on a shadowing, but it's really not the shadowing that I do on a, a lesson. If I was doing a lesson now, I wouldn't be at the table. We would be looking at Pat's table there, and we'd be seeing his cards, and I'd be asking him questions. What does this mean? What does that mean? What are you going to do here? He would make all his decisions, and then afterwards I would say, well, another consideration is to consider doing this or betting this amount. The reason why is because of this or because of that, and just point things out so that the person or the client gets a better feel for uh, options that they have. Not that they have to play like me, but they just have to have options on what they could do. For instance, that guy I would point out, he bet 50 cents into that pot, and we would discuss, you know, what what that might mean. Now, there's a new player coming in right here to my left. He did not post. That tells you a little bit sometimes about a person. He could be playing multiple tables, didn't get a chance and timed out, but in most cases, it's because they want to take a look at how people are playing at the table and get the lay of the land. I'm going to raise here with 10 queen. It's not a great hand, but I'm first in the pot. I needed to get the button, which I got. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully the, one of the blinds uh, will call. If not, that's 75 cents in my pocket. I got to be prepared if they do call to, to continuation bet, no matter what the board is. You playing? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. So he's going to fold. He's not telling me his cards or anything like that. I just wanted to know if he was playing or not. I've got, um, I'm going to raise this up to about $1.50 here. I've got Ace King offsuit. Usually I make it a pot size bet, but. Some of these people, when they've been playing today, they've been playing for extra money, so let's charge them a little extra. If they don't play, I still win the same amount of money. It's not that I'm betting a certain amount because my cards changed or anything like that. See, I got a lot of money in the pot and I didn't hit a thing, but I'm going to continuation bet and hope that nobody picked up a set here. If somebody bets into me, I'll definitely dump it. <coughs> If he comes over the top, I'll dump it. Even though I have a backdoor heart, nut flush redraw, front of runner is a lot to get there. I would need a heart on this card, and I would like a. Ooh, I'm not going to get to see the next card. Mm -hmm. If I needed a card on the next card, I would want to get a queen of hearts. That would give me. Uh, the four hearts, and it would also look like I might have hit the queen. Now, this guy, there's the set. Like I was talking about, somebody might, these are good That's set cool. cards. This guy's got 225. I don't think he's going to risk losing 50 here if he's on the draw. And I think he probably has something like ace eight or something like that. And this guy's got pocket fives or something like that. And, uh, and they just happen to hit. And I happen to lose $4. Good info, though. Pardon me? That was good info. Yep, it's it's info that you have to realize and you have to, you know, you, you there. I see too many people then they'll just stack off with somebody with the ace king and and thinking, well, if I hit the ace or the king, I'm gonna win. You're so far behind at that point, it's ridiculous to put your money in the. You got you know, money saved is money earned. So back away. Don't don't be afraid to look a little cowardly. It's not. It's being smart. That guy didn't get $225 over there, 804 born, with, without knowing what to do. That's a bad bet, a dollar into 285. But again, he was a big blind. He could have very easily had the two. So I'm going to raise the pot, even though I'm out of position here. They're going to put me on, and Pat's going to put me on a certain type of hands in this position, whether I have it or not. Pat, what would you put me on in this position? I would put you on your first act. I would probably uh, a big eight or maybe ten. Okay. Um, okay, folks. The man said I had a big ace and a pocket tens, and then he raised me. So, in my opinion, he's got kings, aces, or ace king. What do you got? I had ace-king. Ace-king. Okay. Yeah. 
when per, when people let's say you get into a pot with somebody and, and they put all their money in or they bet 85 and then the guy let's say it's you and then the other person says to you um what do you got two pair you got you got ace king with a with a good kicker you know what do you got and then they raise you every hand that they say they think you have they can beat just think about it a little bit when you're at the t table and you put your your money in the pot and let's say you did have two pair and an opponent has got to either call you or fold because you're all in in that particular case and they say what do you got a straight or a flush if they say all those things and then put their money in they can beat every hand that they say or they wouldn't put their money in the pot so listen when you're at the table and pick up on that and you might win yourself or save yourself a lot of money what did you have it like ace queen or something what's that what did you have which hand uh the hand i i raised on sixes okay, pocket sixes which was ahead of your ace king but i can't take that chance um but these guys a lot of times with a pair like that will take the chance of calling just hoping to spike the one in seven and a half times that they're going to make the uh, six and get the set and, you know you you're not going to hit the ace king that often but uh a lot of people figure that people that raise have ace king or ace queen so if they have a pair they usually then bet into them if they don't see an ace king or ace you know ace king or queen on the on the flop so there's a, there's ways to play that and you know take take it away from somebody but since you were out of position you were the small blind i was the big blind no i was you were the big blind and i was the under the gun i felt that if you're out of position and then you re-raise me knowing how i play and knowing added when I asked a question that you you gave out vital information that you know you thought I had this and this I figured you were, you know, had big cards you know big uh, ace king or or the big pair I just you know had to deduce that and get out of the way right I kind of I kind of reversed it on you because I know yeah they always told us that anytime a, a, a big blind comes over the top that it's got to be strong so I, I yeah that's right that's right if you would have raised Impro I got a six suited here. If you would have raised improperly there and that went to four dollars, let's say you went to a min raise instead of I went dollar and a quarter, let's say you went to 250 or 275, I would have flat called you in a heartbeat and see if I spiked the six. I would have invested the dollar, dollar and a quarter, but I wasn't going to invest two dollars and 75 cents in it. That's the difference in betting properly and not betting properly. So I'm going to climb back up the hill here. Now, I don't like this uh, Queen Jack that much, but I'm going to make it a pop. I'm going to play it. I'm going to raise it. There's a chance I could just get everybody to fold and win the money, or I could just win with the hand if I hit something. I want this guy out right here with the button. That's the most important guy to get out. Now, I have position, at least. That improves my hand somewhat. Definitely going to be a full pot bet by me, unless he bets into me. That's not the proper bet. That's a fewer bet. It's a good card for me. They can't help him there. Now, if he flopped two pair, then he's got to be beat. But I'm going to check here. I'm going to. I'm not going to get greedy. I might be able to value bet here, but I might be able to lose the hand too. So he only had the seven, and I don't know if it calls me on the end or not. But if I take the chance that he hit two pair there and he checked to try to check raise me, then I lose the money. I'm I'm satisfied with the twenty something dollars that I'm going to win or lose if if he's got me beat. I. If, I, if I'm unsure of myself at the end and I don't know really where I am, then in fact, I'm just going to check it back and, and take the money if I win. You know, there's a lot of people will say, no, no, you should have value bet that. You should have got some extra value out of it. But again, if I would have bet there, I would have, the pot was pretty big and I, my stack was low. I would have had to go all in 
basically, or put some little feeler bit out that didn't look like it was strong, and then he could have went all in against me, and then what do I do? Do I think he's got me beat, or do I just, you know, dunk my money back in there? So why well, put myself in a situation that I don't want to be in? Now, on the other hand, too, with, with him uh, checking in and you checking, you're giving him information, too. Um, you you raise with a with a kind of an inferior hand. I, I made a note of it. <laughs> I'm gonna check here. I got. Uh, well, we all seen not, him. Not in, right? Right. We all seen him bet fifty cents <clears throat> into that pot, and I said that was a weak hand. And what he did was he he, he he bet top pair. He had, it was like seven something something but seven was the highest card because the queen came off next and that was the, the the highest card so he was betting top pair but he didn't bet it enough if he would have bet that flop with um three dollars or something i might have just went away right so that makes the difference now he went away let's see if born goes away too <laughs> well three quarters bet here and i got an eight seven you have what here i i have a, i have top pair Ace seven, yeah. And did you have a suited ace seven? No. So did you limp in, or were you bought? You were no, big I raised blind. it. They uh, they limp, and then I then I raised them. Okay. And they call it. Oh, I got you. Sorry, I missed that one because I was busy yep. BSing yep. myself here. The other the other guy uh, just left too. Just I can't say. So. First guy left, yeah. So this is the guy I want to make. Yeah, double good. up through. Now, I only have a 5-7, and I'm out of position, but it's suited. I'm going to take a shot here for 80 cents that I can hit a 4-6 or a 6-8. I caught the 7 and only one club. Let's just see if he's really... Let's just see if he's really got the ace. Okay, asked and answered, right? Yeah. Now I have a redraw for a seven or a five or a couple of clubs, but he he went up far enough that if he would have min raised me, I might have called one hand. But I'm not going to go any further here because I'm out of position. But I asked a question: Do you really have the ace? And he said, Not only do I have the ace, but get out of my pot, squirt. You know, just right, exactly. You know, and he and he took the odds away. I really don't. I really won't chase anything unless it's maybe three to one or more All right and depending on what I, uh, I, well and a lot of times when you heads up and somebody raises pre-flop and an ace flops if you bet into them if they have pocket jacks or pocket queens or anything like that they're going to fold the hand to you and give it up so the only chance i had of really winning that 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 pot was to bet into him and see what happened i could have checked he would have bet and i could have called you know, a two dollar bet or something, whatever he you know he bet, um, and then seeing if I, I I hit the turn there that I could do that, but I wanted to win it right then and there because I really didn't have anything. I wasn't counting on the turn or the river helping me much. My odds were very slim. There was two sevens. There was three fives. That's five outs, really. A runner, runner, flush. But you can forget about that. So I had five outs times four. I had about twenty percent chance of catching it on the turn, and ten percent on the river. And this Rand guy down here just bought. He just bought in for ten bucks. I guess that happened. That's that same guy. Yeah, that was playing kind of shallow early. This guy just bought in for 25. He'll wait for the big yep. line. Expect him to spin out. I expect him to go away. His, his buddy left. I don't think they wanted to leave at the same time. I, I think they're buddies. But now the blinds coming up and everything. I think he'll go. Now this guy limps in. I've got an ace five on the button. I don't like the hand that much. But if I'm going to play it, I want to play it against a limper. Some of these limpers that have short stacks like he did, you know, will limp and come over the top because they're just uh, limping with a big hand. 
Again, now if he checks, I'll bet three quarters to a pot size bet. That's a lot of his stack. There. If he stays or comes over, he's definitely got the jack, and I'm done. I don't think that he hit the threes here. He may have the flush draw, but um, if I bet five dollars, I don't think it's going to be enough. Six dollars is either going to. He's either going to. Oh, I don't think six is going to be enough either. I think I have to go seven dollars to get him to fold or go all in, and then I can fold myself. There's your hand. There's your hand. There you go. He was on the draw. I think so. I think so. I'm also going to bail out on a turn if you make the right bet. So a limp Darko. No, he posted. He posted. He, he posted. <laughs> he posted stupidly one before his time. So again, I've got an eight six suited in spades. And I like to play the hand, but I can't limp. And yeah. so there, it's a dollar seventy-five in my pocket, or it actually, it's dollar like twenty-five. Good. Take the free money if they offer you the free money. If you get caught, you don't have to get caught that much to make it a profitable gamble. You're going to make money if you get them to fold. Plus, they're going to give you a. Uh, a wide berth and they're going to put you on a wide range of hands and when you do have a good hand you're going to get paid off or if we hit those cards like I just played you're going to get paid off because they're not going to give you credit for having an 8-6 and hitting the straight or hitting two sixes or something like that so Pat's picked up a hand I could just tell from without him telling me with his cards he took time there and I knew he had picked up a hand I'm going to say he's got and don't say yet Pat, um, I think you've got uh, ace jack, king queen suited, or pocket fives. So tell us what you have. I have queen jack suited heart. Queen jack suited heart. So pretty close. I put him on a group of hands. He's right in there. He's up against one player now. And he, he bets, what did you bet? That? Three quarters. Three quarters of the pot. I like to bet a full pot against one player, especially if I raise and an ace shows up. I like to go full pot against one. It's it, it, it influences a little bit more than three quarters, okay. but you can go three quarters. Just don't do. I don't think you should go anything less than that. Although some people might do it for two thirds. Whatever is your preference, make sure you just be aggressive whether you hit or not. Yeah, I think anything less than three quarters is weak. So I'm I would just convert over top one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Unless unless the guy's been playing. Yeah. Usually, I, I I think anybody that bets over half half the pot is is is, it, is more invested in the hand. When they make a half pot bet or a smaller bet, uh, I usually think they're not uh, they're not really committed. That could be an ugly card. I had three two, so I had no part of this. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. The call. Just a call. Yeah, uh, I was thinking queen nine too. Yeah. The other guy must have had something like queen ratty uh, kicker. I'm gonna fold my jack nine here. What did you fold? Uh, three eight. Three eight. Okay. It's funny how you said, uh, with my time, you knew I was going to play the hand. Um, I had the belt, the bet already pre-made. It should snap right in, but there is a delay, I guess. <laughs> See, this guy's closing the betting. Now, he's got two random cards, which, but he's still closing the betting. So he sees all the odds. He knows he's out of position. He's got to judge what to do. So you got to figure he's got decent cards enough to call these bets because it still was a buck. So the possibility of him having something like Jack-8 here or it's possibility of him having something like 8-9 um, or 10-8, or one of those kind of hands. Does he? If you think about that, does he want to stay if he's got a gut shot for 250? And the answer would probably be no because there's a flush draw out there and he's probably way behind. And, it's, and if he's got a gut shot... Whether it be a four-five or a, um, a six-five or the others, you know, he's still 
is going to be out of position, paying too much, and it's it's just not a good situation. With, he's not unless he's open ended, which he couldn't have been there. What do you got? I defend I defended the between two guys. I, I got three six suited. I'm going to go ahead and see the flap. Okay, three six suited in diamonds. Diamonds, yes. Okay. I can't see his cards, folks. I just guessed. <laughs> yeah, then I think have uh, anywhere from Queen King, Ace, Greg, Maltair. I'm going to check it. Put your button down here. He's a bit pot. Uh, not enough, but I'm going to get out regardless. Okay. Uh, depending on the size of the bet from one of my two opponents there, especially since the first guy checked after me, I would have checked Ray's Darko uh, just like he did. <laughs> like that, <You're> right. <laughs> and hey, Darko would go away. I think I would have, if I was in your situation, especially out of the blind, because they would have given you extra credence for hitting something there, I would have tried the, the check raise. You'd have ran into Bourne because he was, he was setting a trap. He might have hit a, a set there himself. So... Mm -hmm. You'd have ran into it, but most of the time, a check raise out of the blind in an unraised pot is successful. Whoa, small raise, a call, a re raise. I'm out. out, and I'm out with my lousy 9 5. I have This is the guy you have. To, does he call the 275? Come over to top. Okay, he does. So let's put him on something like eights, Nine. king queen suited, ace jack suited, and let's put G star on ace king or you know a big pair like queens or kings. Darko is in the middle. He's the one we don't know about. Um, he also could have a, a mid pair or, okay. or maybe even something like. Uh, King Jack suited a jack of diamonds. See if he bets and he bets good bet and see allow he gets an immediate see how quick that call yeah, was. Yeah, call that. So G Star likes his hand. He's either probably got a set here or he's got a big diamond. And then he check raises again. So that's how he got all his money before. He'd been check raising a lot. Darko's gotta go oh no, go all in, Darko. Oh, G Star let it go. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's committed now. He's saying, "Look, I'm not afraid of the diamonds." So mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got the diamonds. <clears throat> that was interesting. I thought T Star had a better hand than that, and he got out of the way really quick. I think he had like an ace king or something. They might have. By yeah. now, and then the diamonds gave him away. Yeah. Boy, Darko does a lot of calling, doesn't he? Yes, he knows. That's why his stack has gone down from twenty-five to nine dollars. I have to be born here every year. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't pot raise. He just, he's just he's barely under the minimum. He put one thirty out there. Then one twenty-five would have been uh, popped. So he had to type in one thirty. So that tells us also a little bit something about. Uh, oh, I had the ace of hearts on this hand, and I had to let it go because it was just an ace or egg to a raise. Mm. Can't be results oriented. Uh, those of you that are viewing this video, there he goes. He he took his money and ran now. Yeah. That's smart though. He, he needed oh, to. on him too. <laughs> oh, he changed seats. Oh, he, oh, he came up to nine. Now okay. why he doesn't like being? Oh boy. Look at that. Here we got a re race from G Star yeah, again. Again, got to go with a big big pair or ace king ace queen here. I don't think it's going to be less than that. He gets a call from the doll world. This guy would love to have his pocket jacks right here. G Star is going to make a big bet here. Full pot? Nope. He goes just over half. This guy doesn't want to dock, dunk in there $5 when he, know, he does it anyhow. Oh my God. Um, At least if he would have check raised there and went all in, he has a chance of, of maybe getting the guy to fold. But now he has no chance of getting the guy to fold. 
So he's got to win it with the best hand. Again, he's he facing the same situation there. It's either all of it or you can't call. If you're calling, you're behind. Usually, you're just totally behind. Yeah. There's a limp from the Darko. Again, he either limps or calls. Not the way to play this game. There's the customary raise from the button, whether he has it or not. He might have an ace nine, he might have a king ten, king jack, anything. Darko, put it in. Put it all in if you're going to put it in. No. Nope. He's drawing again. He's... Let's see if. Uh, we Dick Camel, <laughs> I don't know what his name is. Come on, Darko, he checked. He folded, <laughs> he didn't even he bet. He, just, he didn't even uh, He didn't yeah. even bet, he folded out. That's funny, that's, that's weird looking. Where's he from, Maine? M-A, is that Maine? Um, that Maine's M-A. Yeah. No, it's gotta be a country, this looks like a country. Is that a country? Uh, I don't think it's Mexico. Um, uh, it's M-E, it's M -E, isn't it? Yeah, that's all we see is the M-E, so I don't know. Hmm. Huh. Guys from... So we got a raise from a $16 better. A quick call from G-Star. Now this should be 325 270 some of that area. Should not be a check. There you go, full pot. I, I, I concentrate on that for everybody that's viewing is watch the size of the pot. Watch the size of the bet. Get used to it. Get to learn signals and see if you can improve your game just by that. Without even knowing what card. Now, Pat makes a nice bet here. It means that he's got a good hand for sure. Okay, There's no doubt about it that he's got a good hand. And I got position on him and I come over the top of him. I didn't come over the top of him for a min raise or anything like that. Now it's up to Doll World. Yeah, I'm going I'm to fold my 4-3 out. Okay, he's going to fold his 4-3 here. And I'm going to tell you that I had a 3-5. Yeah, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're thinking away. All right, let's do it again. I, I thought you, I thought you might have, honestly, I thought you might have had like pocket fours or something like that. And I just wanted to show everybody that, you know, when you re-raise somebody and you have conviction and do it pretty fast, if they don't have a good hand, they're gone. They're just, they're not going to, they, they're out of position and their, their, their efforts have gone I had eight, nine, two, way two. wrong. You know, you had eight, five there. Eight, nine. Oh, ace, nine. Okay. That's a little light for early position for him. We got two sitting out. We got one empty, one sitting out. But so we're playing, you know, eight handed. But ace nine is, is is tough in early position. Let's face it, a lot of people lose a lot of money with ace ten and ace jack in early position. So you can imagine how often ace nine loses. Funny, and when I play tournament, I normally don't play anything lower than ace nine. But when I play ring, I um. What do you have here? I got ace jack. Ace Jack, do you think Darko's going to stay with you if you bet? Uh, if I bet pot, I don't think so. No. He's going to go all in. If he's got he's got no choice to go right. all in. I mean, there you yeah. go. he's got no choice. So, you know, he's got the flush draw. He's got the flush. You got the straight, and yeah. he wins. Yeah. So he was going to win 30% of the time there because he had to hit his flush cards. He's got nine outs that he's got times four is 34 percent of the time he's going to get there so you got a 70 percent chance of winning he can't win with over cards because you got over cards over him he can't hit the nine or ten and win so you, you're going to win two out of three times with him but you lost and, oh. and people will do that flush heads up all the time because they win once they don't realize if they if he did it ten times he's going to lose seven times to you he's only going to win three maybe four times at the most that's a negative expectation on his part to, to win money. All right, I got a big stack with the color. I, I, I got I got eight four, nothing suited, so I'm going to let it run. Uh, the eight four is in clubs? Uh, 
uh, one not suited. Oh, not suited. Not suited. I thought it was suited. Okay. So he bets a dollar. They were born as the check raising guy. I got to put a note on him myself. They were probably stayed a long time. And today is 8:19. I like to date my right. notes a lot of times because if I get to see the the person again later on, I like to see how long ago I put that note because a lot of people change over time. Um, in fact, some people have other people that you know they could be a wife and a husband and they take turns playing a certain account, so you don't know who you're up against sometimes. But I like to date it anyhow to see if. They've improved over time. This has been a, a good test of this. I want to see how it comes out and see if uh, I can hear you as well as they can hear me since you're coming through a speaker. I've got Jack too, and of course, I will fold that all day long to our early raise. I'm not here to prove that I can win with crappy cards. I'm here to show you that I can lose with good cards. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'll happen though. And you've seen my videos. I don't edit them. If that happens, that happens. I expect a 125 or 130 from this guy. That's been his standard bring in when he's first. He must be he must be playing multiple tables because he's been climbing down. There you go. Uh, there's the 140. I'm out of position. I got a king jack, but I, I'm out of position. And uh, if even if he's got ace three there, I'm 58 42 uh, underdog. And yeah, I'm gonna win again to the lower one and three. But I'm out of position. Why do I want to put myself in a situation? I'll wait for a better situation to put my money in. So now the blinds have passed me. I'll take the auto post off. Although, you know, Pat and I might stay and play, or, or he might go, or I might go. My, I'm going to end the broadcast of this when it comes around to my big blind. So uh, stay with us, folks, and uh, enjoy the commentary. Give us some comments on uh, on YouTube or email me at alspath at alspath.com. Be happy to respond and tell some friends. Maybe they can follow me there, too. And, pick up on some of the other videos that I've already produced and some that I will produce in the coming weeks and months. He should wait two hands. There's no reason for him to come in right now. And a lot of times it'll tell you whether or not a person has some patience or not. You know, like that one guy, Darko, a little while ago, he came in under the gun. He posted instead of waiting one hand. Had told us a little bit and then, then look, look what happened. He just almost lost every hand except for the one he was in with the fly guy, and that he had to hit a flush to get there. Where'd you fold this hand? I folded queen, queen jack. Yeah, that's not suited. That's that's Hawaii queen jack. That's Hawaii, right? Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. There's <laughs> a hand that loses a lot of hands, and if you don't play it for a whole year, the money you save, you can afford a trip to Hawaii. Right. Just on that one hand alone. I, I just like the um, what you do and what you've always showed me is the foundation is 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 perfect. It, it gives you. I'm going to raise it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how we, folks. I mean, you're playing live. That was a. I was. I I may have played this hand, and you know how I would play it if I played it. But did you hear? He was talking, and then did you hear him stumble a little bit of a couple words and stuff? That's what you're going to listen for when you're playing live. When somebody changes their train of thought or their cadence or they stop whistling, they're telling you a lot of information at the table. You've got to keep your ears open and your eyes open. Right. I had Queen Jack, by the way. <laughs> I had East Three suited. Which would have been a big favorite over you, but what I was worried about was climbing once you down. Raise, I <laughs> that's, can't why, that's why I changed. <laughs> and you're right. I um I usually keep my I if I'm sitting at a table live um I don't wear sunglasses. I, I don't I don't do that. But I I will um I try to keep a um a demeter of just staring at the cards and staring at the people. And then if I one thing I do have a problem with is um sometimes um my mouth will dip. 
which I've noticed. And so I will sometimes just sit here and keep my mouth covered up. Yeah, the two things that you should do it. The two things you should do at the table. If you get all in, make a big bet or something like that. You should stare at the center chips and count them to yourself. Count the reds, count the black, whatever it is, greens. Just count, just stare. Don't look at the guy or a gal. Don't give him a nod. Don't give him a smile. Don't get up. Don't do anything like that. Just look at the stack. Don't answer any questions. If they say something, they're trying to get some information. And the second thing is a lot of times they look at your neck. They look to see if the color in your neck changes. They look to see if... There's a throbbing in your in your neck, you know, yeah. if they can see it. So the best thing you can do when you're at the table, and I'll continue this. Uh, go ahead, Pat. It's okay. Can you me Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to fold here. I'm going to just sit out, but I'm going to continue my uh, my thoughts. What do you have? I got five three. Okay, five three. So if you take your two hands and you you, you interlock your fingers together and put your elbows on the rail or on the table. You can do this right now at your computer and just put it up so it's right under your nose and take a look. It covers your mouth. Your two arms coming down cover the sides of your neck and your eyes are still looking at the chips. Yeah, check that out. They can't do anything. I can see my reflection in the, um, on, the, on the laptop. So you can't do anything. So just try that next time and just keep perfectly right, still. I'm going to check where he's in because I, I, I think he's got crap. Um, I know I, I don't have anything, but I think I can run. No, he should push if he, if he has something, right? Absolutely. I wouldn't check raise a short stack because they're, they're more likely committed. I, I'm going to check raise them only if I have something because uh, I don't like the fact that they're short and it leaves them little option. Right, well, I'm gonna see if he. Is. Yeah, he's either going all in or going away. One or two. And there, here's my answer. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. You know, I'm behind. Yeah, it's two dollars for twenty-five, twenty-three. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> That'll happen sometimes. There is a percentage it. of times that you will win. I'll take it. I'm going to do that. Well, I'll, uh, I'm going to keep the video going here. Just I'm going to set the seat. I'm not going to play. You just tell us your cards. Okay. Uh, eight, eight, four, uh, not suited. Okay. I'm going to go one more time around. Okay. Uh, he, and he left. Uh, we... That's a shame. I should have I should have marked him as a friend, too, because I, I want to look got, for Darko I when I come on. I got him. Now, he, this guy says... Um, the other one just plays details. I don't know how I get that. He has no details? Yeah. That's because he's coming in on a different skin. There's different skins that come into full flesh, and whoever was on the skin originally didn't didn't have to share their information. You saw on Nuts, he just limped into this pot. Mm. He likes to trap and go for sets and things like that. So I would expect him on this card here to go ahead and bet the pot. And he didn't do it. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and take a stab at it. I'm going to... What do you have again? I got E4. Oh, okay. Again, on these videos, I'm not telling him what to do. He's not telling me what to do. We're just talking about what things we see and after the fact and what he considers and what I consider. So we're not colluding at all. Are you doing anything here? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my two jacks. Okay, the thing that to observe here is the guy that limped in. Right. He just came to the table recently, and now he's in his second pot. He... he he uh, posted once, and now he just limped in. So if I'm in the blind and I got anything, even like Ace-9 or Ace-8, I'm going to attack him and raise him up and not let him see that flop. I'm going to eliminate him. And if I was on nuts there in the big blind, if I would have raised, he would have went away probably, I'm saying. Um, and then I got position on Wood Gale, whatever his name is there. <laughs> see, that 50 cents is not a good bet. Doesn't you don't get any information? No. People think it's good because it builds it builds the pot, but it gives right. you no information. You don't know who's got a queen here, who's got the clubs, who's got a jack ten or a king ten for a, for a draw. 
Who's got a weak ace? Because nobody raised pre-flop. There wouldn't be usually a strong ace out there. Let's see if this guy goes half the pot. No, he went the full pot now. That tells me he doesn't need any more action. Yeah, I, I would say he definitely wasn't afraid of the double queen, so he probably had the queen. Right. And he was afraid of the ace the first time. And since he, oh, he limped in, I would give him credit for something like queen jack, queen ten. I know a lot of people will limp in with king queen, but I don't. He could have. But then again, there's a lot of people limp in with queen three suited because they like, like two suited cards. So until you find out what their preferences are. The only time I limp in a ring game now is if, if the table's crazy and I'm, I'm going to limp in with big cards and let them come in to me. That's right. Um, but other than that, I'm, if I'm in a hand, I'm I don't care what. I have to. I can't show the weakness. Decent bet. He's got position. Doesn't mean he's got the queen. Now he has fighting up. Um... Well, he's not going to get into any play, any situation where he loses stack. He's going to play uh, a stop law, a stop, a stop win. He's he's probably said to himself, "Look, I'm leaving here with two fifty. I sat with fifty. I'm going to leave with two hundred. I'm going to play with that fourteen dollars, and I'm not going to get involved unless I really pick up the nuts." And that's what he's throwing his money around doing, I think. All right, I got a 10 10. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, with his stack, I'm, I'm gonna try and set. So I'm gonna just call and I'm gonna set. And I really don't wanna get into a whole lot with him because he's a big boy. Now I'm gonna put him on Ace King, Ace Queen, Nine. Is I'm, a, I'm aggressive. That's a free card. Well, here, here's the two things. I expect a check That's raise here from him. Yeah. Um, That's his MO. Um, you might be okay. Uh, You're okay. Yeah. Ten, ten. I, I, okay. okay, so in the beginning, if I was to, if you were a client of mine in this situation, I would tell you, yeah, you can flat him because you're trying to set mine and everything else. But if you re-raise him, since he raised, he's going to call you more than likely, as long as you don't go too much. You're going to get some information. You're going to eliminate all the people to the button. As it was, they went out anyhow because you called, but you don't know that. But if you re-raise, they're going to go out. So you're going to have position on him. Then you're going to have the opportunity for him to check and you to continuation bet and win, or to fire another barrel on a turn and win. So you gain a lot more if you re-raise him in that situation than flat calling him, because you don't know if he's got the queen or not. You don't know. You have a, if he comes back over the top, you then you know you're really in bad shape. You know you you just you can find out more with the re-raise there. Okay. I, I had a, I had a plan, so I, I stuck with it. Sure. And what scares me the most is the stack box. I know he can he can stack me. So. He likes to check raise, yeah. I know. I got to put a note on. He check raises a lot, so. They're already on there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna look. You can stay to the button, but I'm gonna do one more hand because then I have to close, button up the okay. the video and what have you, and, and I'll, I'll I'll come back and talk to you in a, in a few minutes. So. Okay. Uh, I'll just do my finishing comments on the next hand and then uh, thank you afterwards. I, I throw away it down on your, if you look on your uh, desktop right now, does it say how, how long we've been talking? 58 minutes. Okay, 58, but I think we, we did this maybe 10 minutes in, so maybe it's like a 48 to 50 minute video. All right. Are you playing? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my 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 jack queen king my jack king. Is it jack king? Jack king. Yeah. Not suited. Yeah. So normally I would say in his position it's not it's a losing proposition more of the time unless you do raise like this because then you you know offset it by winning the blinds which he just did 
plus the fact that you had two sitting out at the table made it eight-handed. So that makes the king jack a little bit better. Okay. Right. And the table has fighting, so that's that's true. Well, thank yeah, you everybody yeah. for watching this uh, shadowing demonstration, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. I hope you look for the next video and share it with some friends.